Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Store Hero podcast. This week, I'm joined by Claudio, CEO and founder of Video Eyes. Claudio, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Thomas, to the show. Uh, I'm Romanian. I live in Romania, but I used to travel around the world uh, and lived for a while in New York City and St. Louis and had the opportunity to uh, work with different startups or larger companies as a product designer for the past 15 years. I was always passionate about design and got really passionate about designing complex web applications. Uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was part of an acquisition with Facebook as the lead designer for a social media network and also had the opportunity afterwards to work with the early stage Uber design team. Quite an interesting overall experience to be a product designer consultant for Series A, Series, series B companies that usually redesign their products. Um, funny enough, I was never involved in any e-commerce projects and I never knew anything about Shopify. And when the pandemic hit, I always wanted to build something of my own. And there was a need that I've seen with video, specifically video embedding. And what I mean by a need, TikTok was on the rise and TikTok just came up with the swipe up UX, which was inspired by Facebook's newsfeed UX, which was keeping people hooked. And they just applied the same principle with video. And whenever I was looking at a website that had embedded video on a page, it always seemed outdated because the video embedding itself was done through YouTube, Vimeo, or in order to get any high quality embedding, they would probably use HTML5 and before with custom design controls, but everything would be very bespoke and done in house and probably takes a lot of time to do that and not scalable at all. And the challenge actually came with e-commerce because I thought this was the, pro the first problem that I solved uh, and how video eyes came to be, which is how can I get video reviews on product pages? But the problem is what happens when I have 10,000 product pages? How do I yeah. put videos on tremendous amount of product pages? And that was the first problem that I set out to solve. And I remember designing a very simple concept of a database and and uh, a friend of mine helped me write the first lines of code i am i have a, a degree in engineering but i haven't written code in a while and <laughs> I, I just know enough to have a conversation with my cto and with, with the devs but i don't write code anymore so I, I needed help to actually get the project started and then i started showing it to my former manager at uber at baker He's a good friend of mine and very inspirational person to me. He was also the VP of growth at Meta. Uh, and oh. he, he saw the product and he was the person who put the first dollar into the product. He actually, so he actually were, supported me. Were you working at the time when you had conceptualized this? You kind of mentioned it at the start of COVID. Yeah. Was it a side project for a while or where were you working at the time? It was a side project for about eight months, almost a year. Okay, wow. Well company. Yeah, I, I, I was still working as a consultant for a Series A company that um, right now raised their Series C, and I helped them design their initial product and tackle some very complex uh, enterprise problems when it comes to product design. And uh, yeah, I had to work. I had to work. And I had to, I remember putting my first $50,000 into the project. I paid it to developers to start uh, um, working on a prototype. It was risky. I was like, I'll just put 50K in and I'll see what, what, what comes out of it. And, but it got some really good reactions. And when my friend Ed saw it, I had like a very rudimentary pitch deck for, for it. He, he, he thought that there was something there and he was aware of my tenacity and I'm the type of person that just doesn't give up. If I start something, it's do or die. It's as simple yeah. as that. I don't give up and I, I, I will find a way to, to make it happen. And I, I just didn't give up. I would always find a workaround, like some sort of a, there's always a solution to any problem. And he saw, he saw that in me early on. That's why he brought me at Uber. That's why we worked together. And he liked this concept and he introduced me to some of so some VCs. And uh, one of them was Founder Collective in New York City. And that's when I raised the pre-seed round. And afterwards we, I think it was 2022, late 2022, we closed our seed round uh, led by Slack Fund and Salesforce Ventures. And <laughs> um, that's how VideoWise got started. Yeah, it's it's funny because again, it's 
July 25th and on July 24th yesterday was our incorporation day, four years today. So great. just to do a quick recce on the timeline there. So two years after you kind of properly incorporate, you're getting a VC check from Slack and Salesforce to kind of lead, lead the, the seed round? Yes. How, how was that as an experience to go through? It was very hard, to be honest. Um, fundraising is a full-time job. It's a mm. big distraction from the day-to-day -day management of, of your company and from the growth of your company. It'll really eat up time from, from a founder. It, the market conditions weren't great when we raised. I remember the summer of 2022 wasn't a great summer. Um, there was a lot of pessimism in the market. Capital should be deployed or not. But we've seen a strategic approach with Salesforce in terms of our platform and our initiatives. And we had a very good connection. I think they have an amazingly talented team. The Commerce Cloud team is also um, amazingly talented and we, we, we had a lot of synergy with them over there. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I remember, I, I remember raising, had a lot of conversations. You have to remember that this was the first company that I ever founded. Uh, this was the first seed round that I ever raised. Um, so it's a lot of first, first times. Yeah. Um, but we, we got it. We had, we got to the finish line. We made it happen and the company grew significantly afterwards. Nice, nice. That, that's, that's amazing. For anyone who's listening to Commerce Cloud is Salesforce's e-commerce offering. So you guys aren't just Shopify. It's mainly Shopify and Commerce Cloud is your two primary uh, we started on channels. Shopify as, I think it was, I think we were the first shoppable video app, the first app that deployed shoppable videos. We got copied a lot by any other Shopify app. Everyone copied their shoppable videos model exactly after our interface. Like they all look very, very similar to ours. We deployed the first shoppable video in 2020. And what I think uh, was late 2020 and yeah, got copied a lot, but we are platform agnostic, not just Shopify. We work on Commerce Cloud, on Adobe Commerce, Woom, like, it doesn't really matter, oh. even on a regular website. Oh, nice, nice. I I, I thought it was just Shopify and, and uh, Commerce Cloud, but no, that, that, that's fantastic. Uh, certainly opens out the, the time a bit more. How have you found the morphing from, I suppose, the, you know, we were only touching about this briefly before we came on, the, the morphing from your, your experience as a product designer, which led you to kind of, you know, grow or build the product initially, and then obviously, you know, you've got achieved product market fit, you've achieved kind of really, really good scale over the last couple of months. And then moving from, you know, what you were typically really good at and what kind of drove the idea for the company initially to then your cha your role changes to become the CEO and having to manage a large team and to grow a company, go through fundraising rounds. It's a very different role to maybe what you had initially thought the company, what the company does is a very different role to maybe what your role is right now. It didn't happen overnight. I can tell you that. I'm still extremely passionate about design. Sometime I want to go into Figma and help my design <laughs> and actually uh, get my hands dirty with pixels and, and move stuff around. But as a founder, you have to focus. Time is mm. very limited. That's what I learned. And you are your worst enemy. You can do so many things, but you have to prioritize your time and to choose the most important things to do that will grow the company. That's what I care about is just growth and strategic growth. So I had to learn that and I had to learn not to be as much of a, a perfectionist. When you're a designer, you care about every single pixel. You can't, when you want to move fast with a startup, you have to just deploy. And we actually created a product culture internally that I've inspired from my days at other companies where some of my past employers really loved about me was the fact that I could deploy fast new features. And I actually placed that culture of fast deployment of features of MVPs, get it extremely quickly into the user's hands, test it, get feedback, and then iterate on it. But yeah, it didn't happen overnight. I had to learn. I had to learn how to be a founder. One of one of our one of our investors, Eric Paley from Founder Collective, he was a great coach when it comes to what a founder should be. And I remember having a lot of calls with him every month or every few weeks. And there are a lot of ups and downs that I wasn't expecting a founder would have. And that's the, that's the founder's lives. A lot of ups and downs, ups and downs. And you just have to be resilient. You cannot give up. You have to continue every single morning. They're going to be good days, bad days. The lows will feel very, very low. 
the highs will feel very, very high, but there there are very few highs, you know, and then you're back to normal. And so um, that's what I've seen so far is there's no time almost to celebrate success. Success is very short and it's like, okay, back to work and back to the next objective and next milestone. There's always growth on my, on my mind. So how can we get to the next level and what do we have to do to get there? And the company evolved at a very rapid pace and we are constantly learning and constantly adapting. And I think that's a key factor is to, is to be able to adapt to any situation. And what I'm really proud of is our, uh, our nationality. I don't know how much you know about Romanians, but Romanians as a nation, people that adapt very quickly, hard times, good times, they will find a way. Let's put it that way. Like they will find a way to make it happen. So as a nation uh, and as, as a culture that really inspired my team and, and is, is a team of hustlers, we will make it happen somehow. If we can happen at all costs, we all die together or we all win together. That's what really, really helped us to move very, very fast, faster than competitors. Love it. And are you, is, is the full team based in Romania? You've kind of mentioned you, you, all, all you guys are Romanian. Yeah, uh, the product team is all in Romania. In Romania, and then we have a lot of other members that are remote. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, very interesting story. Thanks very much for sharing. That was so interesting. I suppose to move to, more towards video eyes, we've kind of talked yeah. about video embedding from different platforms. Um, if I was a 10 year old, how would you explain what video eyes does to me? <laughs> of course, video eyes is the ultimate video commerce platform for e commerce. It's the only video platform you will need if you're operating in e commerce, if you're a brand or you're a retailer. That's what video eyes is. We offer two promises to our brands or retailers. Number one, promise that's guaranteed always and it's transparent for anyone to test is our video embedding performance. We will be guaranteed that you'll put as much video as you'd like on those pages and the impact on page speed will be next to zero. So that's, that's our guarantee, performance. The way that we are able to deliver this is in a lot of event with a lot of advanced infrastructure. Like we've, we've actually invested so much time years in crafting and perfecting the page speed so that video loads almost instantly. And when you do a GT metrics page speed test or Google page speed test or whatever tool you'd like to test the website with, the video will never be a red flag. It's never going to slow the website down, not the main thread. Uh, the JavaScript size is going to be really small. The processing time is going to be fast. Like we spent so much optimizing that, that today we're honestly fighting for milliseconds, not even hundreds of milliseconds, but actual points of milliseconds. And the second value that VideoEyes offers, and this is something that we discovered in time through hundreds of A-B tests, is helping brands sell more with strategic placement of interactive and shoppable video content. So what we discovered is that if you place co video content strategically throughout the conversion funnel, it will help brands sell more. It'll increase that conversion rate, increase the average order value, and ultimately increase sales. And we are seeing that after maybe three years of testing on hundreds of landing pages and websites and different positionings, and we actually develop playbooks per industry for our clients on how they can successfully implement video content throughout their conversion funnel to, to sell more. Interesting. Okay. Two things I want to jump into there. So when you talk about video embedding, I'd like to just talk, get you to explain to our listeners what you mean by that, where are they embedding it from? So we all know what a video embed is, but you know, where are you pulling? So for instance, I have, I know my, a product and it's my AirPods. Talk to me about how video gets pulled into the product page of AirPods across multiple different platforms that, you know, I could be advertising on, or might have organic social kind of content on there. We allow video to be imported into our platform from anywhere. You can upload the files, you can import them from your own TikTok, Instagram, YouTube accounts, or even from third party social media accounts if you have the usage rights. We even have a UGC scraper where we can find UGC that mentions or hashtags your brand on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. So you even if it wasn't posted by you. Even if it wasn't posted by you, we can get it into the platform and we even oh. allow to contact the creator to request usage rights or that content. So we allow you to use your own content, other people's content, and even ask them for usage rights. Uh, so anywhere you'd like, anywhere that you can think of. 
So that's how we get video. Pretty much from anywhere, we connect it into our own data, uh, data management. So we have our own digital asset management system, and we call it a library where you can import video. And we all actually even use images because we also have shoppable images. So we've been expanding outside of video uh, with client feedback, but we are still very much at core with video. And then when it comes to video embedding, traditional video embedding by traditional agencies or, or, or web developers is usually done with YouTube embeds, iframes, or Vimeo embeds, iframes, or through Shopify with MP4 files, HTML MP4 files. Now, all of these three are problematic, and I can I can tell you why. YouTube has a very large script size. Every single time you place a new iframe, a new script will be added, and new processing time will be added. And if you place four or six of those, it's going to drive your page uh, page speed and you know really really low to the ground, and it's going to block the main thread a lot uh, when you do a page speed test. So YouTube is probably the worst options out of all. The second worst is Vimeo. Uh, even though both YouTube and Vimeo have amazing video CDN delivery, they were never made for video embedding on site. They're not platforms designed for, for embedding on site. They are designed as platforms to watch content on their own platform, not outside of their platform. So Vimeo operates similar to YouTube, but their scripts are slightly optimized. Even so, Vimeo loads in terms of script size and processing time three to four, five times sometimes slower than video wise. When it comes to Shopify, MP4 embedding, like just dragging a video in Shopify in your theme build, that content is not lazy loaded, first of all. That content is not optimized. You're probably going to have to go and compress your video somewhere, and that's going to affect the quality of the video. It's going to make it slightly pixelated. You're going to need to add the poster image, make it lazy loaded. You're going to need to add SEO metadata to index the, uh, the video uh, with Google's best practices. We do all of that automatically. Give me some nightmares of uh, trying to embed MP4s into Shopify themes in the last couple of years. So uh, <laughs> yes. I do understand that pain point. <laughs> we do all of that by default out of the box in pre-built video widgets, pre-built components that are interactive. And we also have our very own video encoding technology that is not like we don't have a proprietary video encoding but technology, but we have, I don't know, a, ver uh, a multitude of steps of encoding and AI upscaling an AI video study that looks at all the frames, optimizes all the frames of the video. We generate, I think, eight or nine different files out of every single video. And then we and in different file formats from AV1, H264, H265, MP4, WebM. And then we do mobile version, desktop version, uh, different resolutions. Our streaming provider has adapted bitrate streaming for longer videos as well. And we are able to also reduce through our video encoding and our AI optimization, we are able to reduce video file size up to 90 something percent in some cases, like make it really small, get a 10 megabyte video, make it several hundreds of kilobytes. And the quality stays roughly 99% there. So you're not able, although Shopify has an amazing global CDN for delivery, there's no optimization on those files. And as soon as you put them in your page, if you put four of those in your Shopify theme, your page speed is going to go, you know, really down. With us, there won't be any effect simply because we are taking all of the best practices, all of the measures to ensure that the videos autoplay, they load, they are ADA compliant. Like we got a lot of compliance and security measures in it. None of this comes out of the box when you're using Shopify or any other e-com platform. You have to build everything from scratch. And then if you're trying to deploy this at scale, if you have an online store with hundreds of SKUs, it's going to be near impossible to manage the content and deploy it at scale. That's where we come in and we are able to deploy this in just a few clicks with everything pre-built and ready to use. And like, I mean, I've seen it on I mean, one of our customers, uh, Nomad the Label, I think is, uh, he's a really, That's really, a client, right? if and you then... haven't done a case study on them yet, I, I recommend you should. Uh, those guys are killing. Um, I, I've seen video wise and Donald obviously speaks very, very highly of you guys, but What's interesting to me is when you log on to the product page, it's not just one video. You can have multiple different tiles of different videos. And it's not just from TikTok or from YouTube. It can be, you know, cross-platform displayed. Obviously, the, you know, the, the content that was going to go on Meta and YouTube could be very, very different to what's appearing on TikTok. I mean, able to have kind of various content styles side by side, I think is 
definitely something that it, it 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 adds to the product page and i would imagine and it's on your website obviously would add significantly to the conversion rate um of specific products um you know when, when video wise is appearing on, on a certain product. i mean anyone that's listening you can do a page speed test of videowise.com there are over a dozen large scale videos on the home page and you'll see that the page speed score on desktop is 99. like it's it's it speaks for itself we are very transparent and we we put our money where our mouth is and we use our own tool and then when it comes to conversion rate we we have so many case studies and so many results and a lot of big enterprise brands uh, from true classic dr squash barstool sports beyonce sacred there i don't, I don't like there are a lot <laughs> that dr dennis gross that's so she say though brand uh so many that trust video eyes simply because it delivers like they all a b test us uh, we were working and we delivered positive results for over 2,000 brands today. So this strategy works. It does work when it comes to, to testing, if you do it right. And another thing why brands love video-wise is our customer success. We, I don't think I speak enough about our CS team. Shout out to Eugene and, and, and Anastasia and Katarina and everyone else in the, in, in the CS team. Amazing CS team. Like, I always tell them, I always tell this to our clients, it's like, we hate bad restaurant service. We hate bad hotel service. I don't know any bad service. And you know how it is when you pay yeah. something and you get little or very bad service for what you pay. We absolutely hate that. That's why it doesn't matter day or night. Even myself, I'll wake up, I'll come and I'll help you if you need any help. Our, our customer success team gets involved uh extremely in an extremely personal way with the brand they really understand what is the brand doing how are they working they tie relationship we have private slack channels team chat teams channels we work really closely with them like really really closely we constantly test constantly de develop new features for for them uh, listen to their feedback and the cs team is 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 underrated in my opinion as, as a part of our business and if you go and look through um, I don't know, it's a hundred, it's almost 200 five-star reviews right now on the Shopify app store. Almost every one of those mentions their CSM. It's like this person helped me. I love working with him. I love working with this guy. I love working with her. They all mentioned their customer success manager. So we've, we, we created a great playbook and great SOPs on how to, uh, teach people the learnings that we've been dis discovering for the past three years since we've had the business, because it's still a young market. It has evolved so much in Shopify yeah. videos everywhere now. In 2020, we were the only ones that were like preaching Shopify videos. Nobody knew like, what is a Shopify video? And there's there's something else that I can also share on the podcast that will be very funny for, uh, for visitors. And I haven't said this to anyone. I will be writing a LinkedIn post about it. Yeah, you're, you're hearing it first on, on Store Heroes podcast. <laughs> yes, which is Shopify videos don't work. But they do, but they don't work. So this is a this is a highly important piece of information because a lot of our competitors are like copycats that, are, that have tried to copy the functionality of, of our shoppable videos and their interface looks so similar to us. Like, I mean, it's, you know, you, you can tell that it's, it's copied. They're gonna tell you, sell more with shoppable videos, increase your sales with shoppable videos. Okay, here's the truth about shoppable videos coming from the pioneers of shoppable videos in the Shopify space. The truth is the following is the following. We actually have over 50,000 live video widgets today. We, we stream hundreds of thousands of minutes every single day. So we got a ton of data points over 2000 brands. And what we've learned is, and what our data shows us is that less than 7% of shoppers will end up purchasing in the actual shoppable video, like placing an order. The rest, 90 something percent, will stop watching the video and then they're gonna place the order from the PDP. Now, making a video shoppable is still important. When we, we actually did A-B testing, a video shoppable versus a video that's not shoppable. And the video shoppable still performed better because it was consumer expected behavior. You're seeing shoppable videos everywhere, in Instagram and, and TikTok. You sort of feel like you need to see that. You expect to see it when you go on an online store and you start watching content or you wanna see what products is this person in the video using just for product discovery. And we've, we've watched hundreds of screen recordings, heat maps, where do people click? They do click on the shoppable product. 
but they're not going to purchase the Shopple product. Or like very few are actually going to purchase it on the website or on the landing page. The best results are when you're redirecting them to purchase it from the actual page, or they're going to watch two, three, sometimes four videos, depending on how engaging they are. And then they're going to close the video player, and then they're going to purchase from the page. So the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of companies that, have, that are trying to copy video, I still say shoppable videos are the next big thing. I'm telling you, it's not the shoppable video that's doing the uplift. It's the whole video infrastructure and the whole strategy of how do you apply content throughout the entire website from your hero banner on the homepage, from your PDPs, from the UGC on the pages, from your landing page where you're driving ad traffic towards, absolutely everywhere from your email where you, and you can put content over there. It's the whole strategy. And that's what we realized is if you really want to have the best conversion results, you need, the, you need to make the implementation at scale throughout the entire website or throughout the entire conversion funnel. We have so many brands that, that use a lot of landing pages than, than their own sure. website. Right? Most of their traffic is going to those lenders. So it's extremely important on how you, uh, to look at it as a whole infrastructure, as a, uh, as a whole strategy. Don't just place a carousel. Never buy a shoppable video app for their carousel. It won't do any yeah. wonders. It's, it won't do almost anything. The lift will be very little. We will give that to you for free. That's one of our offers right now, in the, even in the podcast. If you just want to use a carousel, I'll give it to you for free, no problem. But the success will be the whole video infrastructure. That's where you're going to have success. That's where the, the AOV uplift, the CVR uplift, the RPS, all of these key KPIs will be affected when you deploy video and, and a good content strategy at scale throughout your entire website. That clearly communicates the product's value proposition. So again, take it from the pioneers of shoppable video. Don't buy shoppable video to increase your sales. Shoppable video is just consumer expected behavior. That's what it is today. What really works is the whole video infrastructure that loads extremely fast, it's highly interactive and it's deployed across your conversion funnel in a strategic way. That's what we do at VideoWise. That's what we focus. That's what we've seen work. And that's how we generate results for our brand. Nice, nice, nice. I just had a quick look at the website before we jumped on and def I could see some Irish brands there as well. So I have to give a shout out to uh, Sculpted by Amy and Sosu or Sosu Cosmetics are on there as well. Probably leads me to my next point. Um, not specifically Irish related, but obviously, you know, you'd love everybody as a Shopify customer, as a, as a video wise customer, as a video wise customer, who is not an ICP? And I'm going to probably try and preempt this. Not really, I'd say it's not industry specific, but maybe brands who are not content rich to a certain extent. Is there a certain type of brand that, you know, fits really, really well for a video wise customer as a video wise customer? And alternatively, is there brands that maybe just this is not the what we've discovered is that brands that are just starting out will have a hard time justifying shoppable videos or a uh, a platform a video commerce platform like ours you do need content to start converting yeah. and you do need an audience to address this content too if you have a very low amount of traffic coming to your conversion funnel there's very little that we could improve like we're always going to improve percentages and a percentage out of something big is going to be very, you know, very significant compared to a percentage out of something small. So video wise focuses on the mid upper market. There are a lot of shoppable video apps that will focus on the low end market. They're going to, they're going to deliver bad performance when it comes to page speed and the app will feel a bit clunky. It's, it's usually, you know, shot, you know, how, how Shopify apps are like, yeah, most of them are just, you know, very, very cheap looking feel and like clunky, not great support, but you'll still get some job done. Like if you want that carousel, like put the carousel there, it's an easy thing. So we don't have any industry that isn't a great fit, but we do prefer to work with merchants that have some, some site traffic, which is at least 50,000 visitors per month on their site. 20 is fine as well, 25, like there's, there's some traffic to work with over there. Um, but the, the conversion value and the revenue value is significantly bigger when you have traffic. We can only like, we will deliver that first promise, the performance of the fastest video platform to anyone. Even if you're small, you can still, you can still use us. Like it's no problem. Like just to design your website. But if you want the second promise for us to deliver, 
then you will need to have some traffic that we can convert and we can increase that conversion and we can work with and you will need to have content. We actually have a great partner network to help brands create content or source content, UGC content. We can help them with that, but we prefer to work with the more established brands because the content is there. Uh, we can help them get more content. We work with them. The traffic is there. We have traffic to work with, traffic to A-B test, to see relevant results from, uh, from, from these tests. So that's what we focus on. There are other Shopify apps that focus on this low end market, the long tail of Shopify. We, that's not our focus, to be honest. Interesting point, and maybe a slight tangent, but in terms of, and just something I, I come across consistently with, with Store Hero customers is, you know, everybody wants of, uh, of UGC content to be able to create it for their store. How best do or should brands go about trying to acquire or source UGC content? Because it's hard, it's really hard to get the descriptions right, to get the right creators and to try and get content that really fits the brand. It's, it's, it looks great when it's done, but it's, it's really hard. I think that when you're just starting out, you should just shoot it yourself. Ask a friend, it doesn't have to be genuine. Just ask your sister or your girlfriend or like your friend, like, look, I want, you know, even if they're not professional, if you have a product that delivers or you need to prove some sort of a value proposition, just film it yourself. As long as it's authentic, it doesn't have to be studio produced, make it authentic mm -hmm. and show that the product actually works. Like you can do that yourself. Everyone has a phone these days with a camera. You can be a bit creative and shoot something that shows the value proposition. If you look at um, True Classic, a lot of people, a lot of Shopify uh, uh, Huge. brands, yeah, they know True Classic in the space. They've been amazing. We've been working with them for a year. If you, if you look at True Classics content strategy, some of the best videos that they have are so simple. It's like, it just shows, this is a regular t-shirt. This is the True Classic t-shirt, side by side. Look how great it looks on a dead bod, True Classic. And then look how awful it looks with a regular t-shirt. You don't need, and you don't even, you don't even need any captions. You don't even need anything. As long as you communicate that value prop. I've recently met with a founder from Tough Trucks, uh, uh, which is like some, plastic trucks that are toys for kids and it's construction trucks, you know, uh, and it's really funny, but the videos are very simple. They just show kids playing with those trucks and like beating them to death. And like, they're so resilient. It's like, they're big and they can get them dirty and they can fall off of them and it's safe and it doesn't break. And it's like, and it does wonders. So it, I, there was no like professional UGC sourcing. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. To make it perfect from the beginning. Just get it out there. Find that product market fit. Are people buying it? Okay, they're buying it, then reinvest your money in a better video. Then like reinvest money again in this content and, and so forth. And you're, you'll be producing or sourcing better and better content as time goes by. I don't think that you should go for the absolute professional ones. You should shoot it first, then you should hire um, companies. One of our partners is Incense Pro uh, or Coley.com. Just hire them, have, I don't know, a dozen of videos produced. They, they come at a very good price. They have amazing creators around the world. We've been working with them. I highly recommend both of these companies. Uh, and there are so many other more uh, out there and just get some content. So yeah, take it one step at a time. Don't make it perfect from the beginning. Perfect. And we'll leave a link to those guys in the, in the show notes as well. Claudio, if you had one offer that you could uh, offer out to any of our listeners today, um, is there anything you, 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 you have for us? I actually have two offers. <laughs> the first offer goes to brands. If any brands want to want to start using VideoWise and make their page speed better and load really, really fast with as much video on pages as you want, and they want to increase their conversion rates, we're offering VideoWise for 60 days free, so two months free. They can use VideoWise for two months. They can test it. It will be guided A-B testing with our, with our customer success team. And then the second offer goes to any agency owners, any design and development agencies, CRO agencies, SEO, you name it. If you're an agency and you want to test video-wise to uplift conversions, you want to test it for page speed and performance, it's free forever. You can test it on any client you'd like. You can use it as much as you want to implement any landing pages, any stores until your client goes live. And even when your clients do go live with video-wise, we'll teach and we'll support the agency how to implement video-wise and we will make a great offer for that client with the agents. Fantastic, fantastic. Claudio, if people are looking to get in contact with you. You can find us on videowise.com. We'll come meeting with us there uh, and our team will be with you. 
brilliant listen Claudio we'll leave it there for today just want to say thank you very very much for coming on that was a really really great episode and I hope um, hope everyone listening got thank you so much for having me Thomas it's my pleasure thanks